Okay, I'm very honored to be joined by Claudio Plitt. You are somewhat of a legend in open water swimming. Could you just touch upon some of your achievements in the sport? Well, I started swimming in open water as uh, we call it in those years professional in 73, as, as I was 18 years old. And I started swimming in Canada, races like the, we don't have anymore, like the 24 hour relay by two people in those cold lakes in La Touque for those who know, and then swim in the traditional Lake St. John. And then uh, I definitely get in love with that type of life of swimming and just training every day. And, and I love the cold water too. And I get very quick uh, identified with those hard races. Um, I swam 26 times Lake Saint, the traditional Lake St. John. And, and how far is that? And that was the 32K till 85, and in 1985 was 64 because we got a double race, uh, 18 hours and 30 minutes or 19 hours, depending. In, uh, and one time was in the almost 14 degrees cold water for those long 64 and 18 hours, which I consider the hardest thing I ever do in my life, uh, racing the, the famous Philip Rush, who who has the, the triple record of the English Channel in those years. So it was a, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, good uh, memories. I swim uh, nearly 400 marathons over eight hours in many countries. I swam in the Nile River many times, swimming in Mexico and Santa Fe, which is uh, one of the traditional races. I swim 15 times. I swam 15 times Capri Napoli in Italy, winning four times. I win Lake St. John five times. I win uh, Memphis Magog, in, also in Quebec. And I swam 20 times around Atlantic City, New Jersey, one traditional uh, 22 miles around the island, and only winning one time many seconds. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I think uh, I swam in Australia, Prague, uh, as I say, the English Channel two times. I get my. I get a uh, Latin American record for, for a while. And, and what was your time for English Channel? Uh, my time was eight, eight hours and 58 minutes in 19, uh, 1981. Uh, and then, well, I keep swimming till I was 50 years old. And so um, uh, Capri Napoli was my last race when I was 50 years old. And in that year, of course, I swim Lake St. John either. It was a kind of uh, goodbye for the long races, but I keep in shape trying to swim short races. For me, swimming is uh, it's a joy, it's a, it's a part of my life, it's, it's what I love. And you mentioned something to me yesterday when we were talking, um, all those hours of swimming you did, all those races, you never had a shoulder injury. Well, I think uh, I never got an injury, I never get out of the water in any race. I never, I never quit, I get sick many times, but I was, uh, I, I built myself as a uh, a, a mental uh, swimmer more than a body. Uh, I think uh, I always tell to myself if I got a good mind, a positive think, and a, a sort of uh, meditation swimming. And, and that's coming when you are happy in the water, definitely. I mean, it's no way. If you are doing something that you like, swimming is a, is a party. And I was all the time happy in the water. Either one. In the hardest race, when I swim across, uh, uh, I cross Lake Ontario, and uh, I swim in the whole night, and doesn't matter. If you are happy, doing, if you choose what you're doing, um, it's hard to get injury because injury is coming from from your emotions, and your emotion coming from the activity of your head, your brain, and your psychological attitude, which is. Is, but I, I think it's more emotional than anything. So I was an emotional, happy person doing marathon swimming. That's great. Uh, Claudio, can you just tell us a little bit about where we are today and what you've been involved with? Well, I'm the uh, race director for uh, the 10K of uh, FINA Josa Marathon World Cup here in Vietma, Rio Negro, in the, in the beginning of Patagonia. Um, it's a race of... Uh, uh, many countries were involved, many swimmers. We are uh, the only one in the South Hemisphere, same as, all, of course, as South America. And uh, we've been working for 11 years uh, in this traditional sport. 
and uh, this is one of the cleanest river probably in the country and in the world because all the, the that water coming from the mountains so my experience here was uh, really uh, uh, building a new view to the sport of open, open water because when I came here for the first time uh, there was uh, thinking to have a race one, uh, from one point to another point in 30k and, and it was uh, in 2005 and uh, at the beginning of the, the history of the Olympic 10k in, uh, in Beijing so I, uh, I told them in that moment uh, the world of open water is changing uh, since I was a swimmer in the English Channel and the Lake St. John on many long races uh, I have to go a little bit against of my own uh, <laughs> conception of the open water long races and uh, uh, the idea to, to bring a 10k uh, was a success definitely because there are two cities involved one is Carmen de Patagonia in Buenos Aires state and the other uh, is uh, Viedma here in Rio Negro so Claudio it was a fantastic race yesterday um, quite challenging conditions we had we had lots of rain, the river was very high, but it was a fantastic event, so well done to you and your team. It was absolutely fantastic. Now I understand that you've got some, you've got some new challenges coming up. You're organizing some new events, yes. which I think is really exciting. Can you tell us a little bit about your next endeavor? Well, this next uh, challenge, uh, what I call it the desafio in, in Spanish is challenge, of the South Atlantic is a, is a competition of 3K in the Falkland Malvinas for us. Um, island uh, in the south of the Atlantic and uh, I was coming from after two trips that I did to Malvinas uh, to Falkland uh, accompanying the swimmers and uh, I decided that uh, inspired by the 42k marathon running marathon uh, there are in the, uh, at the moment in uh, Stanley uh, in, in Stanley port the I say, if there are any marathon, it could be a marathon swim. They have a, such a nice swimming pool indoor also. And uh, I decided to do this 3K and go there and swim with, I was thinking, four or five people. Uh, last Friday we get the, the number 48. So uh, for me it's a, it's a good uh, success in the number of swimmers. And uh, of course, the purpose of this is uh, not only go and swimming, it's also to bring uh, uh, a message of peace, which is uh, after the conflict we got uh, uh, 34 years ago. And uh, it's a way also to heal um, all the, the, the problems we got in, in the conflict. And I believe uh, it's not nothing new in that uh, side, but it's uh, collaborating with uh, uh, with a little to that cause because uh, in Argentina that's uh, it's a it's a kind of uh, difficult uh, a difficult uh, way to accept all the things. So in one way, we're through the sport, bringing peace and. Uh, and say that we can do a sport and be doing something that we like it there. You know? So if people want to find out more about your event, how can they find out? you have uh, a website they can go we, to? We got a website that they call it Desafio del Atlantico Sur and uh, it's a blog spot that uh, includes all the information and it's in English as Desafio del Atlantico Sur uh, and my name is there and all the um, the way that we, we're going to be there because we, we're going for a week we had also invited the swimming club in uh, in the island we've been also we, we was inviting all the, the military people who are in the base they are more, nearly 1000 so uh, we we are pretending to to grow intended to keep going with this event for years and years and make it something bigger and uh, through swimming, uh, put together our two countries. Great. 